La 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 lion. There you go. G2 Esports always banning lion. How could you tell that they were going to ban lion? I just I couldn't I couldn't La 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 lion. So okay, uh just uh, another thing since we're since we're here. The draw that G2 suffered earlier in the season against oh, Shocker Vitality was because partially if not wholly Lion was left unbanned. And Lion ended up being played almost every single round in that match by both G2 and Vitality. Uh, and it was, a, it was a slog, and it ended in a draw. So, something to keep in mind. It's uh, Vitality there banning Goga from the match, with both uh, Thermite and Echo being taken off the board. Uh, if anybody's keeping uh, stats at home, just feel free to write down Goga here, and then Valkyrie going as well as G2's ban against Vitality. And of course, Goga has seen a pickup in his fragging capabilities as a player. A lot of people were very critical of him when he played on support roles for not exactly racking up the kills. But I think that also falls a lot to this misconception that many viewers have that you need to be able to get kills in order to contribute on the scoreboard. Not always the case. And we've seen people who've only had two, three, four kills top out their team and be considered the MVP even though they haven't been Defenders able to get the kills that I think a lot of people want them to have. But hey, would you look at that? G2 is going to start on Teller's Archives. Yay. Right away. Or Servers, Teller's Server, depending on what you want to call it. This is fun. I like this. This is fun. Um, new stuff being brought out by G2. Got to appreciate that. And yeah, you know, on the note of uh, on the note of Goga and his performance and, and kills and all that, I mean, it's forgivable in understanding why you would uh, measure a player's success by their kills because normally I think in especially in FPSs in esports it's that's the metric with which you use to measure how good somebody is there are so many ways to influence matches and rounds and everything just outside of killing people in siege but it's hard to learn that you know when you're just starting out it takes some time to come to that understanding so it's forgivable again that uh that Gogo might have been misjudged, and, and now he's very much on those fragger rolls. I mean, he's, he's seen a, a pretty heavy transition. I mean, right now, playing Ella as an example. Vitality, realizing that they have to attack onto the new site, is well aware that vertical pressure is paramount on this hold, and they are going to need to push into the admin office if they want to make anything happen here. It's going to be a slow push, though. As you can see, Brid already losing one of his drones to the player in Long Desk. It does not look like there's anybody actually playing an admin, and uh, Vitality is actually going to realize that and start their push. Brid, an easy kill, to be honest, as he just gives away his flank to the window, and that will prompt now Kantarichetti to fall all the way back. And Vitality have the control that they also needed within a minute. Yeah, and on top of that, you've taken out probably the biggest pest on defense in Clash. A lot of teams don't quite know how to deal with Clash as an operator quite yet, sometimes squandering that utility, whereas other defensive strategies will require teams to use those projectiles, possibly use those grenades that can counter Clash early on so that when you do finally have to take a, a fight against her, it's very difficult for you to do so. But like we said, Jonas just simply turns his back and gets picked off by the Hibana of Bride. And Fabian also losing a lot of HP in an encounter just a couple seconds ago. That is not ideal for the Maestro, but he'll get picked up by Pengu, likely tossing a, uh, a Nitro Cell at him over and over again. He'll be brought back to life. Vitality Establish control of admin office within a minute. And now they've used a minute and accomplished very little with it. Now they need to, uh, this is, honestly this is typical Vitality. I'm not sure why I'm surprised, but uh, they are starting to isolate tellers, which is very important. And as they take out Cantor Aketi, it's getting better and better. Starting to inch their way into the site. There are no anchors right now. Goga's actually going to make it back to site in the nick of time and get a double kill. A triple kill, in fact, as he gets Bibu vaulting through the window into Tellers. Spark takes out Fabian, putting more pressure on the Ella. Pengu, though, able to support him and takes down Spark, leaving just Brid in a one versus two. It was all Vitality, and now we've seen a complete shift. Brid is in a good position, and he knows he's isolated Goga in the corner, but as he drops, 
He's given away. And <laughs> Goga, the 4K, G2 take the first round when they really shouldn't have. How many times do we see, how many times do we see G2 come out of nowhere in a 2VX or a 3VX where they're down numbers yet still pull off the win? They did it all over Consulate against Evil Geniuses at the end of the Paris Major. Every single situation that it looked like, hey, this is unwinnable for G2. Well, no, they'll win it. Great calls, smart plays, good positioning, and great reflexive play, especially from Goga, hugging that tight window inside of Tellers, picking up two kills and three kills. It was almost a clown car worth of people from Vitality all hopping out and trying to get in. You know, it's, it's sometimes your metaphors work and sometimes they don't. But Pengu, all he needed to do was get the one kill to... Leave Bride by himself playing above. Well, can. even if uh, even if Gogan finished him off, Bride did land on top of a Nitro. So you saw Pengu try to uh, detonate and Bomb was a bit too slow. And yeah, 4K for the Spaniard. Lobby for round number two here as G2 managed to pull off a pretty astonishing victory on a site that, as you said, they were battling back on pretty bad numbers, a 2v5 that ended up becoming a, uh, a 2v1. I think a lot of it was G2's light touch with Admin Office. And they they had you want to start the rotation playing Clash, but it was so late, and he got caught from the printer repel before he could actually deny any push into the Admin Office. So I, that might have been a a problem with the prep phase where he was trying to accomplish too many things elsewhere and didn't make it to his position in time. Either way, uh, Admin Office was just lost too easily. Speaking of, seems to be the uh, initial point of contact for Vitality yet again, but this time they are pushing onto a different site entirely. I believe the middle floor, which is interesting that we have so much pressure now actually in the admin office while defending the admin floor. I mean, yeah, okay, or sorry, the uh, the middle floor. It is it is a a good thing to hold as a defense or defender, no matter what site you're on, whether it be the basement, middle floor, top floor, the new site, but. Um, Still, I mean, there's more emphasis than what we saw last round. The mirror trying to use uh, his uh, mirror window to the best of his ability. And as you can see, he can just stand up whenever he wants to and challenge anybody inside of the admin office. But as he's detected, his position is given away, and he knows that he uh, cannot really play up there forever. It is too much, of an, uh, too much exposed. Drone out the mirror as well. So Pengu, the, just the barrel of that vector will be spotted. And look at that. They'll try to force him forward. He'll get droned yet again. In fact, a double drone, but a bit careless droning will happen. Waiting to see if he'll be able to jump up. Pengu under fire, and he might be uh, goner in just a matter of seconds. Daring the Hibon to try to repel. Pengu's one of those few players where you don't want to engage him in a 1v1 fight because he so rarely loses. Kanto Ricchetti will end up helping his teammate out, and you'll see Pengu will be able to scamper off towards Long Desk into the safe arms of Jonas. He pulls out his shield, and like I said, the first kill going to Kanto, the carry rocket as he takes one down, and especially the buck. Pretty good for Kanto as the buck had worked into admin office in the MP5, just simply out dueling that C8. Now Vitality have lost a member. But they have gained the positioning that they oh so very wanted. And that's that admin office. Seeming, uh, interestingly, they're, they're going to actually relocate to the B side of the building now. they got two players on B, uh, B window repel. And one of them's going to lose his life to Kanto Ricchetti. And another. And then a follow-up from Pengu. That's three for Kanto, leaving Brid the final defender. And he's got three lit opponents, but also he's playing against a dock. This is not a great situation, especially with the Clash he's not going to be able to get past that very easily. He's just going to be confronted by the Clash, trying to knock the shield away, bait in Pengu, and then get a second onto Jonas. These could be low-impact frags here. He'll try to go through Copier, but miss, hit, misses Flash Grenade. I think he realizes that the clock is going to be the biggest impediment towards his success. Lights up Kanto, but Kanto's just going to dive back down. Keep in mind that the site is lobby, so six seconds for Bride. Does not have the diffuser far away. This round will get closed out, and G2 will take it with Kanto picking up a 4K. That's two 4Ks for G2, by the way, with Goga getting one in the first round. Now Kanto getting his own. It's 2 enough favor G2. I think the most hilarious thing about that is it was a middle floor defense that took place almost entirely on the top floor. 
Only in the last 15 seconds do we see anything happen for the attackers downstairs, and it was barely past the threshold of that drop down. Now, solid defense there for G2, making that really work in their favor, and it all started with the admin office hold that really frustrated Vitality. A big point is that Pengu managed to make his way out of the cafeteria without any punishment whatsoever. He wasted so much time despite his mirror window being broken and still continue with the, uh, continued to influence the round after he rotated out. So definitely something that Vitality are going to need to fix need to moving forward if they want to have a chance here. Yeah, I mean, they're still, once Bob again, taking Vitality. so long as we expect from Vitality. Though, actually, I was impressed that particular round with how fast Vitality was able to put the, I guess, put the moves on Pengu inside of that uh, staff break room just by admin. They were able to, to drone him out within 40 seconds, then get the Zelfias off and try to pressure him before Kanto got the very first kill. So that was a bit of a brisker pace than we're used to Vitality setting. But then after that, it was when everything kind of fell apart and took a long time for them to transition, so. I feel like the transition is one of the harder parts. So once you've got the initial control, once you've got your little beachhead, and you want to make your, you want to start making those pushes, where do you want to push? You have all these different options, you got to choose something, and I feel like that's maybe something that Vitality struggles with, is really just figuring out where they want to commit themselves. Yes. Anyway. G2, after winning the first two rounds, will go on to the basement defense for their third site, and they are choosing to use the uh, Mira strategy in uh, the middle floor by that bathroom. A lot of Mira usage here from G2, a lot more than most teams on this map. Uh, she's not considered to be an essential operator here of all maps, uh, as much as she is on, on most. So. I'll, I, I appreciate that G2 is uh, is using her as well as they are and kind of setting the meta. I think if there's any one team that is the meta setter, it's it's G2. I'm not using anything uh, completely abnormal, but uh, they are definitely using her well. Now, top four control, the main priority here for Vitality. And G2 are not choosing to try and hold it too much. Kendra Ketty was pushing up the yellow stairs going to the top four, but he ultimately was eliminated in that endeavor. Zephyr will get the down onto Fabian, but he did manage to open up the drop down before he was downed. Uh, and Zephyr, of course, cannot know that he downed his opponent, as it's a bit of a long angle. He didn't have the ACOG, and he did manage to escape. So we are going to see Fabian get picked up. And Jonas walking towards the top of Visa stairs. Somebody else from G2 is going to have to get the 4K this time around as Kanto will not be able to do so. Can we possibly see it from the clash of Jonas? I mean, it's not outside of the ordinary to see a clash get a kill or two pulling out that sidearm, but we'll have to uh, we'll have to tell. Keep in mind now that the site is downstairs. So meanwhile, as we've seen most of the encounters happening on different different floors on both rounds one and two. Garage is the focus. Here we are. And Pengu will use his C4 a bit in vain. It'll blow up a hole inside a piano as he goes fishing with it and can't find a single bit of health off of Vitality. But Gogo will find one. That'll be his fifth kill. Take out Bibu. And you've lost your buck. Both Spark and Rafael. It looks like Rafael has taken a tiny bit of damage, but Spark will hang on. Final 30 seconds. The shield is still very much up. We've got the Maestro Fabian on a flank, playing a little bit off site. And Goga almost losing his health here as he'll head towards the double doors at the bottom of Spiral. Pengu will give his team a lead now as Spark goes down, and that is the Blackbeard. But gets traded off as Zephyr is there, roars right through Pengu, and it's back to 3v3. Here's the Clash using her strength to slow down the Capital. We can now have Fabian jump in. Look at that great coordination. Brid inside a sight, he'll hit one of those uh, concussion mines from his own teammate, as it's just Brid and Zephyr. And Brid will get a kill, but they run out of time, and G2 Operation just needs to watch that clock. Great job overall to waste time, and yet again, Vitality, a victim of the fact that they just took a little too long. Are we surprised, though, really? Uh, the attack strategy there from Vitality was to cover the entire building, and even then it was a struggle to do so. Pengu wasted so much time in the bathroom, and despite Cantor Ketty's relative ease in being deleted in the yellow stairs, he 
did manage to delay for a decent chunk. 20 seconds. Not really much for a life. But when we're talking about G2, they're overpaying for everything already. They've got so much work being done by the likes of Pengu in, the, in that uh, in that bathroom. And then also once the, the default comes, once you're actually back into the main bomb site, there are still X factors like Fabian roaming in archives that Vitaly just don't have the time to account for. So definitely not a great situation for Vitality and already they're starting off on a bad foot with uh, being down three rounds. Yep. Once again, G2 spreading out most of the killing there, and they can go back to Tellers as it's been unlocked, Lobby and Garage, but we'll go up to Console. Now, I have no doubt that G2 want to be the first team to do this in the Americas or Latin America or, or EU. Millennium were unsuccessful on their fourth site, and I'm going to try to reference exactly which site it was. As when they came to Consulate, Millennium won Teller's Garage and Lobby, but they struggled on Console Office. They couldn't get it going. If G2 wins here, I believe it'll be the first time that we see a team win on all four of the new sites. And of course, if there's any team that's going to do it, it's probably going to be G2. Yeah, well, it would be cool to see, I suppose. Uh, since the the new site has come out, we, we haven't had much success on it at all. I mean, it, like you said, has been, I uh, have had teams that have been successful there, but it's it's seen as, I think, kind of a, a leper. It's, it's going to take time for, for teams to figure out how it works. Um, and uh, it would be impressive for G2 to set that, though. Um, obviously, having already won on the new site, all I need to do is just now win that top floor and get that full sweep. But before that can even happen, uh, initial engagement here between Brid and Jonas on the yellow stairs. Nothing's really going to come of it other than a little bit of time delayed. Brid, as you can see, just trying to work his way into the bottom floor to get a better angle, possibly to try and flank his opponent later in the round. But he's actually just applying a little bit of pressure. Utility coming out here and... Lots of time being used by Vitality. And they will use Zofia, Gershmat, and uh, Flashbangs to try and push G2 back. But, I mean, it's going to be successful in pushing them up the stairs. It's not going to accomplish much anything else. And as the Capital Firebolt comes out, this is just so much emphasis on yellow stairs and so much utility being used to accomplish very little. Yeah, you saw that the Jaeger of Goga was there backing up the shield of Jonas just to possibly be able to get a kill, but wasn't able to do so whatsoever. Kanto will juice himself up after he takes out Bride. Bride usually being the person to die last. He'll get confronted by the Buck, and there you go. Fire arrows, a couple explosives, a grenade, and as well, Buck as Zafir holding a very powerful position on the top of Skylight will manage to catch Goga, and Pengu down will be a 2v4 for G2, a big advantage for Vitality, but... We've, uh, we've definitely seen this story before. And Kanto will creep his way back up yellow. If there's still a body watching that stairwell over top of yellow, that could be potentially hairy for him. You've also got the buck of Bibu inside a bathroom. So might see this chance to have console office upstairs go in favor of defenders disappear. Kanto will almost outduel Bibu, but great shots from that C8. And Fabian, as he titles himself the greatest player in the world, will now have to deal with four more. And no, it'll be Vitality picking up their very first round as a fear on top of the connector window. See the shots from the Maestro will miss. Zafir will clean them up. So, spoke too soon. Very well done there from Vitality. Well, they spent two minutes doing it, but once they did eventually get the two players at the top of Yellow Stairs, they were able to pinch them with relative ease. Bunching them up together allowed for then after the kills to coming out control over yellow stairs and by extension control over the B site which came into play with again pr again pretty quickly after those first two minutes so well done collapsing by vitality and definitely seemed like a dominant round G2 struggling after that initial wave of attacks archives teller is going to be the next site here for G2 so they're gonna go full circle they weren't able to get the win on the top floor, but they were able to get the win on archives. So this will be a familiar and comfortable site. Though it was mostly due to a 4K clutch by Goga, we have to be honest. Yeah. 
speaking of 4K clutch, he hasn't gotten many kills since. <laughs> he, he and Kanto both have one kill apiece after their clutches, but it, I mean, that doesn't really matter. There's an ebb and flow to this team, and when they're able to pick it up, you know, there's... Exactly. There's that matchup on Coastline uh, a couple weeks before we went to the Paris Major where Goga was just getting clutch after clutch after clutch, and then Goga dies, and Pengu gets a clutch, and it's just... I mean, it's also like sometimes you'll have matches where like a Pengu will get two kills, or then in the next match, Kanto will get two kills, and the next match, uh, Goga will get like three. You know, it happens. It, I think I think that's kind of just one of the reliable things about uh, G2 is that they all know. I think they could just lean on any yes. single one of these players. There's there's no player on G2 that's not capable of stepping up when it's necessary. But speaking of stepping up, take a second to highlight Vitality. That last round was beautifully executed. Again, they really propped up the players on yellow stairs, and after they had. They got a little bit lucky. Got to, got to be honest with the with the guys who were playing yellow stairs. The Jaeger and the Clash um, made some huge mistakes. But lucky be darned. I mean, you win the round. If you win the round, that's that's all it really comes down to. And they certainly did just that. So props to them. Great positioning, and uh, they're gonna start this round off with a bang, taking out Cantor Aketi. Yeah, that's a big kill to get, especially on the Legion, whose traps will cease their generation or their regeneration. It's also showing that Vitality is getting a bit more aggressive and deciding to push earlier on. You know, it's they still wait till the very end, but having that Blackbeard be able to get kills early and get those picks needed to give you some breathing room, especially when you're going against an opponent who can very definitely be seen as, as smothering in G2. It's good for Vitality to be able to have that. Oh, there you go. Vitality showing off their Vitality skin on the L85. So we'd spoken earlier about uh, team skins and all that jazz. And there you go. You get a very good look at it. It also looked like the phase skin was being run by Bree Day earlier. I think, yeah, like you talked about earlier, just teams are running the team skins in general. No matter whether it's their team that they, that's, you know, being represented or another. It's just, you know, it's support. And it's a blanket statement. A lot of these teams are friends, you know. Sure, there's rivalries, but uh, these guys know each other very well. Now, Vitality have control over admin, but what's this? Yet again, the site is not admin. And while they can exert a lot of pressure onto the tellers from that spot, as we saw last time, it's not the end of the world for G2. They can retake after losing the admin office. And it looks like G2 is setting themselves up right now to do just that as Goga starts to rotate off those yellow stairs back towards the site. He was accompanied by Jonas as well, and you've seen that the shield is at an escort for most of the time. A frag grenade will go down, and oh, it'll miss, but Zephyr won't as he manages to get the shots off needed to fail Jonas as that quick switch. You saw how fast that was to be able to pull out the sidearm of the clash. Goga in good position here at the bottom of Visa stairs. Some pings going down onto the sledge of Zephyr. Asphyxiating bolts go in, and you know that the clamp is going to come down now. How patient can G2 be? Well, there you go. Goga's going to get one. He's going to look for another. He sees it around the corner, but nice sibling rivalry as Bibu drops him off. Traded off by Pengu. Rafalin on the action. Leaves Pengu. Last man alive. Plant going down. He's going to have to play this right. Can he get the diffuser? No, he's going to see Bibu, but he picks wrong, trying to duel the active member of Vitality. And Vitality will pick up their second round in a row, splitting Teller's archives on that main floor, Teller's slash servers. And we'll head through the first half of G2 up three to two. The attack there from Vitality was about as typical Vitality as it gets. They established control of admin office. They waited for about a minute and a minute and a half, give or take a little. And then and with 11 seconds left and they decided to make their final push because they had a man advantage thanks to all the picks they had gotten early on the final push managed to work out a lot of that comes down to g2 making a, a series of mistakes most notably or most importantly is just pushing your players out into exposed areas you know vitality is going to wait for you to give them the opportunities and uh you know g2 certainly ponied up right we're ready to provide those opportunities now, a uh, big thing is, of course, like Giannis, for example, just pushing into the Visa and whipping out his shield. He could have easily just stayed alive there. It was too late in the grenade prompt, or in the grenade cook, for him to uh, try and go for a quick switch and a kill. 
Now, this is interesting. Going into the second half, Vitality will choose to go to Archives first. So, G2 and Vitality both defying the meta and saying that we will set set it as we want. And uh, I like this. This is cool to see. Um, again, it did work out for G2 in the very first round. Didn't work out for them just now, but Vitality are certainly going to give it their all. And... All right. Let's get underway with round number six here as we transition into the action phase. And a good roam from Vitality upstairs is that's four Mute Jammers being committed to admin. It's going to be a headache for them to possibly drone out. There's no Vigil on the board as well, so you can imagine adding a Vigil to that with the Mute Jammers there, making it all but impossible to spot him and know where he is. Fabian's going to get the footprints of the dock of Bibu, and then he's just immediately going to push off. So <laughs> gets that information <laughs> gets that information for his teammates, and then he goes, ah, oh, I'm going to do the rest of the work that needs to be done. And that's the, I suppose, Teller's window just inside of Visa. They'll go on a rappel here to take out this camera and maybe Keep an eye on spiral stairs in case there's going to be a rotate. Swift action in the bottom of garage right now as G2 is just stacked right up. And they're very close to being able to secure a kill here. Look at this Jaeger. He's going to have to move in a hurry. He tries to sprint out to take an engagement, but not a wise idea when there's a Zofia, a Buck, and a Glass all watching that same angle. Rafael down. They're looking for their next victim. He's just outside of security in the hallway. That's the fear. And Jonas will finally shut him down after he takes out Goga. Not good that he was allowed to eliminate the glass. That means that one-sided advantage that comes from the smokes is just not going to happen anymore. But G2 still have the man advantage. And they have taken control over the bottom floor, which is going to give them a wow, good avenue a towards A. Once they start that push. Mirror window, of course, throughout that whole engagement was disabled thanks to the smokes from the glass. But it's not going to matter anymore. Pushing into the site. There's nobody actually playing in the B site. There are still players upstairs in A who can, I believe, use the drop down very likely over in uh, Deep Visa if they choose to. But, oh, what's this? Actually, Brid is in between Sandwich and he goes down to Cantor Aketi. Jonas going for the plant and Pengu covering the drop down, which is going to be soon utilized by Bibu in all certainty as he sees the diffuser being planted in Sandwich. Spark by the Visa stairs, or rather, Spiral stairs, loses the fight to Fabian, and Bibu actually, instead of using the drop, will go down the Visa stairs, getting a nice shot onto Fabian. And he's got to find three more. In the post plant, this is going to be difficult, and Cantor Ketty won't even let him start. G2 win another round and put it at 4-2. 4-2 four two. Four two G2? Four. <laughs> yes, 4-2 four G2. 4-2 four G2. You see the buck just hammer down that recoil and be able to get a kill through the soft wall. So, that was pretty precise. They swept in through the garage. They flushed out the roamer that was playing downstairs. Got the kill. Continued to take ground away from Vitality. Had Fabian distracting from above. You had Spark playing above as well. Roaming, but wasn't able to get back to site quick enough. And wasn't able to really agitate G2 either. You, know, you can roam and look for kills, you can roam and bait out utility, you can roam for map control, you can do a number of things. I'm not necessarily certain that what we just saw from Vitality was accomplishing any of those three things that you need to do. So maybe tighten it up a bit more and see where you go next time around. It's going to be Cafeteria and Garage for Vitality as they will not opt for a mirror instead six picking onto a pulse. So information being gathered actively rather than passively with that Mira also give you the pulse to possibly play close to any of the reinforcements and bait G2 into trying to use their utility quickly or else all that information will just be relayed to the rest of Vitality and with how good Vitality is as a team being able to communicate with one another, Pulse is a great operator for them. Now, G2 does not have a Thermite going into a basement attack, which means they're going to be forced into a lot more vertical play. Also, very likely to mean uh, a locker push coming from this attack. Uh, Vitality has the right lineup to stop. If not outright, then slightly delay of uh, any kind of push coming from the back. They've got the mute jammers to slow things down as well as 
the evil eyes potentially to get a lot of information on that back call. And this pulse, of course, is going to be able to do a lot of damage if the attackers come from Visa, which is again very likely given that yeah, there's no thermite. It's a basement hold. Kedra Keddy looking to fight the attackers on, or the defenders on the top floor. He has the information. He knows he's got an opponent playing by the Visa stairs, but he's unable to find the angle. He's going to start droning for himself. Oh, a little bit of a disjointed push here from G2. They don't have as much coordination as you would expect, but the jobs are all getting done, albeit slowly. Giannis will get the very first kill onto Spark by the main lobby. It's a very important kill that's taking out the Jaeger, who is roaming quite a lot. He was being extremely aggressive, didn't really waste all that much time, but did at least do a little bit. Jonas will also get Brid through the floor. So good use of the soft destruction there. That wasn't even his own soft destruction, I don't think. That was just the buck. So already a lot of damage done onto Vitality. And very little time being wasted. This is maximum efficiency for G2 for the time being because you've got attacks that can go down within 90 seconds that usually involve you rushing in and catching the defenders by surprise. But this is G2 executing early. They obviously intended to be able to accomplish everything they did within the first 90 seconds and still keep the rest of Vitality cornered on site. Though we did see Zephyr, the smoke, just walking, just walking right up spiral stairs, and he's trying to get back towards the site as Jonas will try to help out the rest of his team. Smoke's going down, and that's going to be Goga taking point as the Glaz site trained, going for the wall spray with the Jackal pings going, trying to give some more information away. But Jonas is very exposed here, and if they can't get suppressing fire down, you can stop the plant. Kanto picks up two kills on his own, and Bibu, last man left, in a position wherein. Well, if you lose this, your team goes on to map point. It's the mute is going to get spotted, and Goga will have to reload as he runs out of bullets. The rest of G2 will just simply circle him, and that's Fabian that will be credited with the kill, though, let's be honest, that was very much a team effort. Doesn't look likely that we're going to see a tie here between these two teams, and G2 have definitely learned from their mistakes as they'll take their second attack in a row, and they are on match point but inches away from utter defeat. Uh, Vitality are going to have to win three in a row to get a draw, if anything, out of this. And it's not exactly gonna be easy. Lobby will be their next attempted defense. After unsuccessfully holding the bottom floor, it looks like it's gonna be a mix up, we're going to archives now. But after unsuccessfully defending the bottom floor, it makes sense that they're going to want to go somewhere else, especially considering G2 didn't even have a Thermite, and they still managed to make that attack work out for them tremendously. Now, a six pick onto the Capital for a G2 away from a Jackal. Interesting that they're going to choose that on a, a Consulate. Both are very useful, though. It was uh, telling of the heavy stra uh, smoke strategy that G2 is obviously planning. Now, with the Attacking Teller's the Archives... The smoke strategy is not as amazing, though we did see it utilized well in the previous at uh, attack onto this site. Uh, as you guys may uh, probably noticed, the mirror window by the ba the um, garage was completely shut down by one smoke from the glass. But I'm sure G2 are probably expecting a main lobby hold here from Vitality. Either way, they're not going to be upset with their operator selection. If there's a team that's going to be able to make stuff happen, with even the wonkiest of operators, I'm p I'm probably putting it down for uh, probably putting it down for G2. Let's be honest. I think I think G2 could be summarized by if there's a team. Uh, seriously, we've said that like three times already. And it's, it's, it's true every time. I mean, it, it is very true, right? It's it's yeah. it's beautiful to be able to analyze exactly what G2 does and how they're able to coordinate well with each other. And I mean, we're gonna see quick push yet again as they assess that it's a Teller's Archives, and this is match point. This could be over very very fast. They're just gonna sprint right in and cut through the site, cleave right through Vitality. But it doesn't look like there's anybody on site. They'll get a plant off within 30 <laughs> seconds. Vitality so committed oh, no. that no, Vitality, everybody is still alive. The good news is that this is still winnable for Vitality, but they'll retake and all the sites will be trained on all the various members. Fabian, Goga, Pengu, can we see Kanto? And Jonas pick up kills. 
Just two left here for Vitality. Brit gonna get the first one for his team, though, as Pengu goes down, watching the Visa flank. The Firebolts in the back hall are going to prevent any potential pushes, but Goga will also take out Brid, leafing Spark in one versus four, and he has no time. Fabi in the final kill. G2 take it six to two. Six two G2, I believe Matt Andrews said. Six two There's G2. Six two, six two, six two G2, and six two a pretty common refrain among teams here. It was masterful to just watch that exact push and Vitality really will walk away from this pretty empty handed all things considered our fastest match of the day still takes eight rounds for us to get there but look at that Kanto we're getting 6-2 G2 woo and nine kills for both Goga and Kanto Rakettis. Goga's moved and transitioned on a more of a fragging role as G2 continuously changes up what their various members do so that's it for us we'll have an interview coming in but for man for G2 this is just a team that looks unbeatable in a series. They've only dropped what? They've only dropped two series in the last year against Black Dragons in Sao Paulo and then Team Liquid in Atlantic City. That's pretty darn impressive. Noticeable trend there.